The Rays have lost a pair of extra inning contests in frustrating fashion. But today is a new day, and right-hander Matt Andrees will look to get the Rays back on the winning track against Sox southpaw Wade Miley. We welcome you to Tropicana Field. This will be the middle game of this three-game series between the Rays and the Boston Red Sox. It's turn back the clock day at the ballpark. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Rays Baseball with Brian Anderson. I'm Dwayne Stats. Great to have you looking in. Well, despite a couple disappointing losses, the Rays continue to run first all alone. They're up by a half game in the American League East. They've been there for 12 consecutive days. Be a no accident that Logan Forsythe in the middle of the Rays lineup has been red hot over the last 11 games. And he's coming off of a three hit game last night. This is a guy currently on a five game hitting streak in your right way. You go back to the middle of June, June the 15th to be exact, and Logan Forsythe is doing some damage. I'll tell you, he's got quick hands. He's not afraid to be able to pull them through on balls that are in, the balls that are away. You see this again, again, and again. We keep beating a dead horse, but guys that use the middle of the field will be more consistent than guys that don't, and that's been Logan Forsythe for the past couple of weeks. Across the diamond for the Boston Red Sox, the Rays lineup will try to figure out Wade Miley because you can see what he's done against them. Three career starts, a perfect record, an ERA of .47. Now, this covers 19 innings. He's given up just one earned run. However, he has walked 11 Rays hitters, and that's what you want to do with Miley. You want to see him up in the zone because he wants a lot of ground balls, and if you've got to take advantage of the free passes. Miley got off to a tough start this year. He has pitched much, much better lately, and there's the line when he defeated the Rays on April the 21st. Five and two-thirds of shutout baseball. But one more walk, then strikeouts. This has been a team effort for sure for the Rays, but no bigger part of this team than the bullpen. They're in overdrive and overtime. Todd Callis takes a look at the Rays bullpen when we return.
today's play in the AL East, leading the Yankees by a half and Baltimore Orioles by a game, Toronto by a game and a half with their loss earlier today. You saw members of the bullpen wearing the throwback uniforms today as the Rays get ready to take on the Boston Red Sox. Matt Andrees on the mound. He has not gone six full innings at any start this year. Five and two-thirds, his longest outing at the majors or at AAA. And that will add some innings to a bullpen that has already been used a lot. Consider this. Yes, there was an off day Thursday, but back-to-back -back games of extra innings for the first time this year. That adds to the total of the innings, which is six and a third innings more than Arizona next closest in the majors and in our Toyota trend you'll see that they were a full 13 and two-thirds innings higher than the next closest in the AL the New York Yankees we asked manager Kevin Cash how much of a challenge it is for him to really address the bullpen innings moving forward without a doubt uh, we spend more time talking about that than anything else with this club uh, and anytime you have uh, basically back-to-back -back nights where it goes into extra innings and you're you know you turn it over to the bullpen the sixth and seventh inning uh, it becomes taxing so that's something that we'll have to factor in today we'll check on everybody during batting practice see how everybody bounces back it is nice that we had the off day slotted in there in between but that doesn't always mean that guys are just going to bounce back that great the bullpen has been outstanding, but you want to make sure they're still fresh come August and September when you're making a potential playoff run. We have three minutes and four seconds until the first pitch today. You see the Red Sox wearing the 75 jerseys and the Rays wearing what they imagined would be their unis if they played in 79. Well, the first pitch right around the corner. <laughs> We welcome you back to Tropicana Field where the Rays and the Boston Red Sox meet in the middle game of this three game series. Take a quick look at the starting lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Bookie Betts, Brock Holt, and Xander Bogarts, the top three. David Ortiz, Pablo Sandoval, and Mike Napoli down the middle. Diaz of Leon and Bradley Jr. completing the lineup for John Farrell. First pitch of this game. Upstairs for a ball that pitch presented by pinch a penny. Skied to the right side. 
Souza Jr. out there in right field makes the grab one away. Well, let's take a quick look at the Tampa Bay Ray defense and see it's how it's going to line up tonight. Here behind Matt Andrees. In the outfield left to right, we have David DeJesus, Brandon Geyer, and Steven Souza Jr. Across the infield third to first, Evan Longoria has Drupal Cabrera, Logan Forsythe, and Jake Elmore with Rene Rivera behind the plate. That defense brought to you by BMW. There's Brock Holt. And he takes the pitch for a strike. It was Holt's base hit in the 10th inning last night that scored bats with the go ahead run and what turned out to be the game winner. Ray's dropping that game in 10 innings, 4 to 3. And a couple strikes poured in by Andres. An, an interesting post game comments by Brock Holt. He said that he went up to the, the plate in that particular bat looking to hit something to the right side and move Mookie Betts up to third base. But he got a pitch that was away and elevated and able to shoot that thing into left field. And he is out on strikes. Two up and two down to start this one. And nice late movement on that sinker there by Matt Andrees. And you see what he's done over the course of the season. And, and really, it's about staying the course if you're Matt Andrees. Since his recall on June the 12th, he's 2-1 and one with a 2.40 earned run average. And, you know, that pitch right there would be gold for him. Oh. If we could see more of those, it would really be... A big step for Andres. It would because you get that kind of late sinking action to go along with the fact that he will throw a slider and a cutter. He'll change the slope and the break and the speed of that pitch. And also he will elevate from time to time. So that's a nice combination of pitches to work with. A 2-0 count to Bogarts. He had a chopping infield hit last night. One for five and Hitting 292 for the year. Two and one. And, and if you recognize as a starting pitcher that that low strike is being called, you're a guy like Matt Andres, wear it out. Two and two. He has Adam Hamari behind the plate. Young umpire, just 32 years old. But he is inclined. With pitches out of the zone to call them strikes a significant amount of time, which gives you the idea that he's going to expand the zone. Recognize it early on and take full advantage. That's what you want to do. Full count. And that's what makes Matt Andres his four seam fastball that he will elevate now and then so. Effective because guys are looking down 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 in the zone and then he all of a sudden he'll pick a, a, a spot to pop one up and get the swing and a miss There's a ground ball for shortstop As Drew Cabrera who makes the play three up and three down Rays coming into hit no score
first inning. They'll present this lineup. Brought to you by your Southern Four dealers. Brandon Geyer leads it off. Joey Butler, the DH, and then Evan Longoria, followed by Logan Forsythe, Steven Souza Jr., and Drupal Cabrera in front of David DeJesus, Jake Elmore, and Rene Rivera. This pitch from the lefty Miley is a fastball for a strike. One and one. Miley wants to get the ball and throw it. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, this tempo that he's setting already. You got to be ready to hit. You may see some of these Rays hitters from time to time ask for time, step out of the box, try to slow Miley down because this is the pace he wants to keep. Two and two. And don't let those numbers fool you. You know, he's seven and six, ERA four and a half over 14 starts, but in his last eight, six and two. With a 3.10, throwing the ball much better lately, and is throwing the ball great against the Rays. And there is strike three call. Fastball against Geyer looking. Now let's try to run through the Boston defense rather quickly here. Brought to you by BMW in the outfield left and right. We have Deaza, Betts, and Bradley Jr. across the infield third to first. Sandoval, Bogarts, Holt, and Napoli with Sandy Leone behind the plate. Well, there's Joey Butler, who very seldom moves once he plants himself in the batter's box. This could be interesting with these two matching up. What I'd like to see with these two is a 10 pitch at bat. It would take like 42 seconds. One strike on the foul ball. <laughs> Here we go. Butler stays put. Miley ready as soon as he got a new baseball. And he throws a strike. It's 0-2. Could we see up? Oh, we did. Could How we see Joey Butler step out of the box? And we just did. Well, there you go. A departure from his overall approach. And he is out on strikes. Well, not only is Wade Miley working quickly, he is sharp right now. The fastball, we've already seen it to both sides of the plate, firm and to its spot. And how about this slider? He's able to get good depth with it. He breaks it down towards the back foot and gets the swing over the top. Evan Longoria takes a little time before he steps in to begin this drill. Off the plate, one ball, no strikes. In the right center field. That's going to be in there, extra bases. One hop and to the wall, and Evan has himself his 15th double of the year. Now right now, Evan Longoria content if teams are going to continue to stay away from him, he's going to go the other way. And over the last couple of nights, we've seen him go the other way with authority. This is a change up middle down. He stays inside it, gets underneath it and through it, and drives it between the Boston outfielders and one hop the wall. First scoring opportunity goes to the Rays here in the bottom of the first. Presenting itself with two gone. And Logan Forsythe takes the pitch inside. Logan has been hot, as we mentioned in our opening. His average up to 298. He's three for 10 lifetime with a home run against Miley. And is ahead in the count, 2 and 0. Oh. And Miley starts him with, with a pitch running in, a fastball running in off the plate, then goes immediately away. That's the way that you have to pitch a hitter that's very balanced at the plate and red hot. And he's not giving him anything at this point. Well, he's got first base open. Two outs. And 10 for 15 is Forsythe for the life of this little five-game hitting streak. And he walked him. Ball four. Whenever an unintentional, intentional walk is talked about, you, you just witnessed one. He fell behind Logan Forsythe and really just didn't give him anything to handle. Ends up walking him on four pitches. Two men aboard with two outs, and here's Steven Souza Jr.
14 home runs and 31 runs batted in for Souza. He takes the first pitch off speed and it's outside. One and one. Staying off speed with him. Suzo for four in the game last night. That's going to be a strike. That's smart pitching there by Miley. A couple of change ups, getting thinking outer half, slow him down, and then all of a sudden pop that fastball right on the inside corner. And a cut and a miss. Suzo's out on strikes. Slider ends the inning. No score through one. Let's go places by Morgan Auto Group and by Checkers. Mix and match our famous Big Buford and Big Chicken Deluxe. Get two for five bucks. On to the second inning, David Ortiz leads it off. And he shortens on the bat, takes the pitch for a strike. Rays, as usual, with the shift on. One ball, one strike. Matt Andrees had a one, two, three first, picking up a strikeout along the way. One and two. Well, the race pitching staff has made it abundantly clear that they are staying middle of the plate, actually not even middle of the plate, outer third and off the plate away against David Ortiz. They've done it all series long. Up and away with a fastball. Two and two. I'm going to try to make the big boy beat you to the big part of the field. Three balls, two strikes. And if you saw Rene Rivera, he called for the fastball and then kind of gave him the little little box with his hands. You know, let's think this thing over the plate, but we want it elevated. Trying to get that swing and a miss, that chase that Andres will do every now and then. And did he 
he go? Yes, he did. On the appeal down to Brian Gorman. David Ortiz out on strikes. Here's a look. A lot of movement with that bat. And that was the right call. Just a little bit too far. Not able to hold up, and David Ortiz knew it. Well, the Rays entice him with a fastball away, and he's out on strikes. But he wants to swing. He, not typical of David Ortiz to want to take pitches and cost him there. Sandoval takes a fastball away. One and one. I love the late movement that Andres is getting on that two seamer. Especially to the left handed hitters, it's getting good run away from these guys. Lifted in the left. De Jesus. Two gone. Two quick outs, a strike out, and a fly ball. You know, when you see a guy like Andres that, that wants to keep the ball on the ground and, and is throwing strikes, that, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of early in the count outs because he's going to be around the strike zone. Hitters are going to recognize that. They're going to be swinging early, and you got a chance to get some early in the count, easy ground balls or soft pop ups. Well, there's a breakout of that ground ball, fly ball ratio. You take that all day long, almost two to one. He starts Napoli away. Well, you you have a, a, a defense like the Rays put behind you. Why not keep the ball down, pitch to contact, you know, go for strikeouts when you need them, but use that defense because it is a plus superb. Yeah, if you pitch for a team like that, just keep the ball in the ballpark. I mean, really, <laughs> you talk about the infield. It, and, and scooping up ground balls, they're great at that, but you, the outfield the same way. Guys that can cover ground. High towering fly ball into left. De Jesus waiting for this one to come down. That is out number three. On to the bottom half with inning two. No score. You by a clean, crisp Coors Light. The rates just a little beyond the halfway mark of their home schedule, and they're 20 and 22. And that's something that Kevin Cash would like to see this team improve mightily on. How is that possible? I mean, you saw the numbers on the road. This team goes on the road, and they just they have that bunker mentality, and they go out and get the job done. And the struggle here at home. Here's Cabrera. 
Taking a 1 0 pitch and lining it into left. He's coming off a three hit night last night and singles to lead off the second for the Rays. As Drupal Cabrera is starting to come up with some hits for the Rays and some big hits at that. And this may not seem like much, but a leadoff single and putting Wade Miley into the stretch right away, that's a big hit. Yeah, anything you can do to disrupt his rhythm because otherwise he's going to set the tempo for you. David DeJesus takes a little bit of time before he settles in, making Miley wait. Cabrera back in. You don't run a lot against Miley. He's tough out of the stretch when it comes to base runners. And that right there wasn't even his best pickoff move, but you could see how that could even fool you. So, yeah, you're going to want to hang tight. Inside, ball one. Missing with the fastball. And, and you don't even have to run against Miley as much as you need to be able to force him to deal with you, to think about you. Because the more he's thinking about you, maybe the, a little bit less towards the hitter, and that's where he can get something to hit. One and one. Finally coming off six scoreless innings Sunday in Kansas City. Gave up five hits in six innings and no runs. Two and one. Raise four and three against the Red Sox now this year. Two and two here at the drop. It's Jake Elmore waiting on deck. And a strike on the corner. Runs it to two two. And that look by David DeJesus says it all. A guy that's always got a smile on his face. That breaking ball looked to sweep off of the plate. And what a big difference three and one makes as opposed to two two. Ground ball over the mound towards second. Out at second and safe at first. Holt got to that one and then made his way to the bag before Cabrera could get there. And that little change of direction by Holt because he had to go a little bit deeper up the middle to field it. Everything's a little bit out of rhythm there. There's no way you're going to get to Jesus. But they do get the lead runner Cabrera. And Xander Bogarts, look out. Yeah, it's starting to get a little crowded around second base there. And the Bogarts provided an obstacle for Holt to deal with, but no chance to double up to Jesus. In the dirt blocked by Leon. Jake Elmore getting a little over 240, but over 300 against left handed pitching. And he has a hot pitcher out there right now to deal with. Back to the mound. Out at second. Bogart floats it to first. Out the call at first base. Boy, that was very close. And Elmore grounds into the double play with Bogart just floating his throw over there. And you're right about the float. I mean, he gets here, gets to the bag, and then flutter.
It's on a turn back the clock Saturday. Boston wearing the 1975 version of their road uniforms. And the Rays, as you may notice, have been wearing this. What they imagined their uniforms would look like if they played in the late 70s. Kind of a funky style there with the blue and the yellow. Uh, guys, coming up on Thursday, final game of this homestand, July 2nd, you can bid on these game-worn uniforms by going to RaysBaseball.com slash auctions. There'll be a live auction online. Rays players wearing the uniform today will be available for auction on July 2nd. All proceeds benefit the Rays Baseball Foundation, guys. All right, Todd, thank you. You could don one of those throwback uniforms and contribute to a good cause. Alejandro Diazo, one strike to count. That's going to make it 0 2. That's the one nice thing, Dwayne, about having Wi Fi in the booth. While we're calling a game, trying to, to bring some knowledge to the people at home, I'm going to be bidding on one of these jerseys. I dig them. So there'll be some competition yeah. for those who would like uh, to put a bid or two in. It's a good um, fake look. It never happened, but it looks like it could have. I think they're pretty uh, accurate as far as the 70s go, what they may look like. One ball, two strikes. They've always reminded me of the old Padre uniforms and the Rays colors. Well, well you get the brown out. Yeah. You've got some stuff going for you already. Yeah. That's a step in the right direction. <laughs> yes. Although brown and orange is a beautiful combination. <laughs> well, there's B.A. Hey, uh, you, you have a uniform you know, already. <laughs> you know what that is? That's me coaching third base and somebody missed the bunt side. <laughs> That's what that is. Good number, though. <laughs> this one is down, and it's 2-2. Two -two. It's amazing how... Quickly, they can find those old photos of you. And I finally, finally know who's behind this. Do you? Yeah. I'm gonna hunt him down like a dog. <laughs> the other amazing part of that is that you wear that expression in almost every photo we see. <laughs> I'd like to say that, that it doesn't come across very often, but. I'm passionate, Dwayne. What can I say? And we all love that about you. 2-2 Two -two the count. Lifted in to right. Sousa Jr. is over there. Well, one up, one down in the third. Seven straight for Andres to start this game. We were just uh, in Cleveland, obviously, you know, a week ago and, and ran into the family, of course. And my father said the, the angry face that they show all the time. Where did that come from? Where where did where was that picture taken? So I had to explain to him. Yes. Remember the Houston sure. Tierra and Toddler convention at the hotel we stayed at? Yeah. And how disturbing that was. Put you in a bad mood. It did. It was well there were there were posters out in the hallway. Yeah. It was very creepy. <laughs> so that's where that, that face came from. That was a rant in the booth about that particular situation and someone was snapping away. Apparently preserved for all time now. And that was legit disgust. <laughs> and despite that, you got beyond it and delivered an outstanding performance on that day's broadcast, as I recall. <laughs> and there's a nice pitch that comes back. Strike on the corner, and it's one and two. We got two starting pitchers right now that are, are sharp. And Matt Andres, he's working quickly also. Good tempo. Moving the ball around the zone. And there's strike three call. Boy, a nice job working over the Boston catcher. The, the last two fastballs, I'm sorry, caught a lot of the plate. Not really sure what Sandy Leone was looking for, but this right here, I mean, okay. Three and four. That's how you finish them off. Obviously, leaning out over the plate, looking for something out over the plate, and Andres. Surprises a middle up. There's Jackie Bradley Jr. Strike one. He comes out swinging and misses. When guys are working this quickly and, and able to move the ball around the zone like these two starters are here today, you can just see the confidence just dripping off of what they're doing. And I'm, the other thing I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Please do. That 
on this throwback to the mid 70s. The pace of this game is a 1970s pace. Two strikes now to Bradley. He's out of there, and that's going to retire the side. One, two, three, nine in a row. Bottom of the third coming, no score. Selfie Saturday brought to you by H.H. Gregg. Just submit your best selfie watching a Rays game by using the hashtag Selfie Saturday Rays. We'll select the best photo and feature it in the post game show. Uh, selfies going on. There's ball one to Rene Rivera. Rene is four of eight against Miley. And out of play now one and one. A couple of runs batted in in those eight at bats. One ball, two strikes. Two and two. Two two on a fly ball to straightaway center. Bet still going back, not yet to the track, and makes the catch. Back pedaling onto the warning track after the grab. One out in the race third will swing back around to the top of the order for Brandon Geyer. Well, this is where you start to look for uh, adjustments being made, not only by the Rays hitters, but by Wade Miley. Does he continue to attack the same way or start to switch things up? And right there, you see him come out with a curveball. We haven't seen that all game long. And now Brandon Geyer leading off, lead off hitter, second time through, sees one first pitch. Two. Well, getting a little crafty now with a breaking ball and a change up. We talk about that often how a, a pitcher, especially a starter, would like to hold on to a pitch for as long as he can. Oh, and, that, and that 0 2 pitch hits Geyer. That's the 10th time this year Geyer's been hit by a pitch. Brandon Geyer stands up on the plate and he seeds no ground ever. And if a ball's coming at him, he'll just turn into it. He does not care, especially if you're down on the count 0 2. This is a pretty good play. Just let it hit you. The two guys on this team, Guy or one of them, and uh, Forsythe, the other one. Now John Farrell's out. 
I guess he might want to talk about that uh, hit by pitch, but it's a waste of time. He's, he's really breaking our rhythm here to even have this discussion, okay? Well, he, and he's also arguing whether he leaned into it. No. What he did is he just had made no attempt to get out of the way of it. Okay. I'm just going to let it hit me. He didn't move into it. He didn't move away. He just took it like a champ. I mean, it's off the plate. It hit him. Let's go. There's, there's, there's a lot of pressure going on in that Boston <laughs> dugout. Here's Joey Butler. I mean, I'm enjoying this 70s pace. This is great. I'm enjoying 70s too. Want to know, but I was in a position to enjoy them a lot better than you were. I was trying simply to simply the fact that I was around. I was hoping to get into kindergarten. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes, a fastball to Butler misses. Rays with a man on and one out. Ooh, Butler way out in front of that, that 2 0 changeup. Well, you mentioned crafty. That's about as crafty as it gets. Almost unfair when you've got a good changeup. Two. But we're trying to be ready for the fastball off the change up there. Well, we saw that same sequence of pitches to was it Sousa Jr., where he used some change ups early in the count, then the fastball in, and then closed them with the slider in. Does he go back to that same pitch here? Ground ball to second, short. Bogarts to second to hold one. First base, 6 4 3 on the double play, and the Rays are. Finished in the third, no score. Networks while supplies last after the game stay for the concert from kids bop kids for tickets call 888 fan rays or visit raysbaseball.com Top of the order for Boston here's Mookie Betts and the Cutter off the plate one ball no strikes Mookie Betts continued his hitting streak waited until the 10th inning last night when he doubled to extend it to 13. 
Missed the fastball. It's one and one. And he's been doing his job. You know, over the course of that 13 game hitting streak, you saw the numbers that were posted. He's also scored 13 runs, one per game. You take that out of your leadoff guy, no question. Two balls and a strike. Center field. Geyer right there. That's the first out. So with one away, that's 10 in a row retired by Matt Andrees. Let's check in with Emily Austin. Emily? I am hanging with some new friends, Dwayne, in section 134. Fox's Sun Sports is proud to welcome the Boys and Girls Club of the Sun Coast. A little camera shy, but to today's Rays game as part of Fox Sports Young Fans Week. Fox Sports Fan Express's bus will help take more than a thousand kids to games in per partnership with our regional sports networks across the country. Dwayne B.A., I've been inside the bus. It is pretty cool. All of these kids had such a great time. To learn more, go to playball.org. Good time at the ballpark. Thank you, Emily. Off speed, a change up to Holt. 0 2. Oh. And that's a strike. Comes back and catches the plate. Holt caught looking. Boy, there, there is nothing better. You get a hitter leaning out over the plate, looking for something middle away, and Matt Andres closes him out with the two seamer in the front door. Look at Brock Holt bailing out of there, and that pitch is over the plate. And you can understand the frustration because when he's making his decision to not swing at that pitch, that ball is trending off the plate. It's that late sinking action that takes it back to the inside corner, and you don't even recognize it as a hitter. Want to know the count to Bogarts? We're seeing some pitching here in the early stages of this game from these two. The lefty Miley and the raised right hander Matt Andrees. It's a strike and it's one and one. Yeah, they're, they're breaking down pitching to its purest form. Using good stuff, not overpowering stuff, but boy, are they setting up and sequencing so well. Two and one, they've set a good pace. Three balls and a strike. Andres with 3 2 to Bogarts in the first, got him on a ground ball. 3 2 to Ortiz, struck him out swinging in the second inning. Now he's 3 and 1 with Bogarts. Ortiz on deck. Going to take the count to three and two. Foul ball out of play. Bogarts, who came into the game a little over 290 for about the last, well, close to a month, he's at 340. This Boston lineup has actually, from the beginning of the month, beginning of June, they've swung the bats much better up and down the lineup. And obviously, Bogarts, one of those guys. There's a base hit into right, two out single. And there's the first hit, first base runner given up by Andres. So David Ortiz will come to the plate in the fourth inning with two gone and Bogarts at first. They just trying to throw a strike here, and, and Bogarts, you got to credit him for not getting greedy. Stays down and through it, hits a hard line drive out into right field. Boston's first hit. Now David Ortiz. Ortiz had a couple singles and a walk last night. Way high. 
Thomas ball upstairs. It seemed that Andrees tried to put a little something more on that pitch up and actually got less. It's like when you try to swing a little bit harder. All of a sudden you tense up and, and everything's not as smooth and free and easy. It's the same thing with releasing a baseball. You tense up, you muscle up, and you don't get that free and easy finish out in front. And it's the first time he's worked out of the stretch, the very first pitch. He wanted to make sure he got a little less on that fastball, which was only about 90, 89, 90. And he sees who's at the plate too, and the damage that he can do. So everything tensed up there, and it didn't work out so well for Andres. Foul out of play. So it's one and two, and Rivera pays Andres a visit. You know, Matt Andres, one of those pitchers that you can envision in any number of roles. I mean, he's done the job, uh, you know, as a starting pitcher, what has been asked of him. We've seen him coming out of the bullpen, able to give you length out of the bullpen. He's the type of guy that you wouldn't figure would take very long for him to get warmed up because of the types of pitches that he throws, the types of pitcher that he is. To be a very valuable member of this Rays pitching staff. Ball. Fastball. Greece to try it again on one and two. Fly ball back into deep left center. The Jesus will have room on the track. He makes the catch to retire the side. Red Sox leave a man. We have no score, and Evan Longoria will lead off the bottom of the fourth inning. one app for live baseball at bat is up to the moment within game highlights live look ins replay reviews stats cast and more at MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Want to know the count on Evan Longoria. The strike one and one. Yankees have taken a six to nothing lead in Houston. That game's now in the top of the second inning. And the Houston starter, Brett Oberholzer, was ejected from that game. So things were not going well for the Houston lefty. 
with the Yankees scoring six, and now he's ejected. Into the dirt to Evan. Two and two. Well, with the way that Houston has has played this year, continuing to play very good baseball, all of a sudden the series against the Yankees is a big deal, and they're playing this at home. Gory is out on strikes after the double his first time. That pitch breaking down and in to strike him out. It's been a big pitch for Wade Miley. He's gotten a number of swings and misses. He got the double play ground ball from Joey Butler. That's what he's able to get with that slider. Tight spin and late depth. Good foresight. Looks at a strike. Wade Miley has absolutely changed the way that he has started off these Rays hitters second time through. First time through it was a lot of hard stuff. Both sides of the play change up. Now you've seen with Longoria and with Forsythe the first pitch breaking ball back door. You saw a first pitch curve ball to Brandon Geyer to lead off his at bat in the last inning. And he's setting a pace that doesn't give these hitters much time to think about that either. Here it is. What are you going to do with it? So he tried to end the bat right there. Trying to drive that fastball in. You know, you're he gives you so much to think about because now all of a sudden in he's throwing the fastball in for strikes and the slider down and in for put away. Now he goes for the fastball in for a put away. Does he come back with the slider right on top of it? I would. Ooh. And how about that? Say that, that, that off speed changeup. You're trying to think along with him right now, not that easy. And, and because we'll everything's see in play. <laughs> Everything is in play. And he's not going to give you a lot of time to think about it. No. So you're just up there in react mode, and that's not always a good place to be with this guy giving you everything he's giving you. Well, that's a little number handled by Miley. You, you can see that in the swings. Yeah, when these raised hitters fall behind in the count or get deep in the count, like the last two swings from Logan Forsythe, he's just trying to put the ball in play. He's not looking to drive anything. I mean, granted, if Wade Miley makes a mistake, but he's just looking to put the ball in play, defensive swings, and Miley's getting easy outs. And that's why I, I mean, this is a perfect example. Pitchers, if, if you know what you're doing and you feel good out there, it puts hitters on their heels. If you set the tempo, and he's doing exactly that today to the Rays lineup so far. You already have a built in advantage in that the action starts with you. You dictate the action. The hitter is reacting. And now you're doing it at a pace that doesn't allow that hitter a whole lot of time to come up for error. Your teammates behind you are on the balls of their feet because you work so fast, they got to be ready to make a play for you, so you keep them interested. There's just, there's just no upside to. You know, 30 seconds between pitches. How many do you throw? You got eight or ten pitches, okay. If you don't get on the mound, throw the ball. Just foul. Yeah, I mean, you got two, three, four, maybe, and uh, it's not going to take that long to figure out which one. Yeah, I mean, we have to play rock, paper, scissors with your pitch selection. <laughs> For goodness sake. That's two out of three. One and two the count on Susan Jr. Now it's even at 2 2. And Brian McCann hit a grand slam in the first for the Yankees in Houston, and then Chris Young hit a two run home run in the second. And there's a reach by Souza on the changeup. He's out on strikes. We're through four. Boston nothing, and the Rays nothing.
as Alex Morgan and Team USA take on Germany with a trip to the finals on the line. Coverage begins Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern only on your local Fox station and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Fifty four pitches through four innings for Andres one hit allowed no runs and Sandoval hits one on the ground to Forsythe one pitch into the fifth one out. He's got to get Mike Napoli to the plate. Napoli hit a towering fly ball back to second or back in the second out to left field. How did this happen? Texas shut out Toronto. Four to nothing. That's a final. Napoli takes a strike. Uh, I'll tell you what happened. Giovanni Gallardo yes. is what happened, and he's been red hot lately. Eight and a third, three hits. And I think he's got a, a scoreless streak now, 23 plus in that range. So he came in hot and he leaves hot. And I'll tell you, you had better be pitching against that Toronto lineup. We saw what they did last night, put up a 12 spot. Rays actually pitched him pretty tough for yes, two of the three did. games. A ball, two strikes to Napoli. No runs, two hits for the Rays. No runs, one hit for Boston. Headed to Cabrera. Let's throw to first to Elmore right there. So two gone. Base is empty. Here's another reminder that uh, today is Selfie Saturday brought to you by H.H. Gregg. Submit your best selfie watching a Rays game by using the hashtag Selfie Saturday Rays. We'll select the best photo and feature it in the, the post game show. And as we realize, there will be no photos of that event from Cleveland because somehow they didn't turn out. No, that that photo right there was of some cords laying over in the corner, and then there was another one taken. It was a picture of a shoe. So who had their shoe off? <laughs> I mean, I'm comfortable in the booth as much as anybody, but yeah. I don't take the shoes off. I mean, either maybe there's one left over from the prior trip in there. By I don't know who proceeded <laughs> to send, but there were cords on one shot that Todd took, and then a shoe on the other one. And, and what did Todd say there? Pre pretend that Joey Butler just hit a three-run homer. <laughs> That's exactly right. Giving us motivation. <laughs> right. We're about to count to Diaza. Very excited. Ground ball right there for its foresight. And a very quick fifth inning. Three ground balls. We go to the bottom of the fifth. No score.
flex packs allow you to choose any three, six, or nine games with no blackout dates. Plus, get half off parking when using the funds loaded to your race card. For details, visit RaysBaseball.com or call 888 Fan Rays. As Drupal Cabrera leads off, and the first pitch is a ball down and in. Cabrera has one of the two hits. He's single to open the second. Caps it foul. Longoria doubled in the first. Cabrera singled in the second. Geyer was hit by a pitch in the third. And the fourth was a 1 2 3 inning for Miley. Two balls and a strike. De Jesus next, followed by Elmore. In the right center. That's in there for a base hit. Extra bases coming for Cabrera. It goes all the way to the wall. Cabrera is around second, going to go for three, and he's going to make it. There was absolutely no hustle by Betts or by Bradley Jr. in going after that ball once it got past him. This is a 2-1 heater. Cabrera's all over it. And once this ball gets by the outfielders, it was just a just a, a jog, a jog out to get it. No real. There was no sense of urgency whatsoever by Boston outfielders, and as Drew Cabrera took full advantage. There was a point in which he thought maybe that could be cut off, but then it got between them. And it goes for three bases, the fourth triple for Cabrera. They lost their will to chase. There's a hot shot foul off the bat of DeJesus. Well, here you get a good, good look at it right here. Once it gets by him, no real sense of urgency. And Miley not happy with that development. Now one and one to DeJesus. So the Rays with a golden opportunity to break the scoreless tie. Ground ball right side. Napoli's going to step on the bag and Cabrera stays put at third. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Okay. Now Jake Elmore. Infield in. Into the dirt blocked by Leon. Rays were able to pick up a run in last night's ball game on a wild pitch. Why not again? And you know Wade Miley is trying to you know, either get to a point where he can go for a strikeout against Jake Elmore or pound the ball down in the zone and get a ground ball right at one of his infielders. Jake Elmore, on the other hand, he wants to get something into the outfield. However, he needs to do that. Elmore against the left hander. He's been tough today and a bouncer foul. Jake's hit over 300 against lefty pitching this year. Miley has been on his game today. And a foul ball in. The sequence here has led us to one and two. And now Wade Miley could go heater in again. He could go the slider off the heater in, or he could go with the change up away. And, and really, he's not tipped his hand in these situations. You've seen him do a little bit of everything. And a shot toward the corner and left. That ball is gone. Home run. J. 
Jake Elmore. It's a one-two slider out over the low wall down the left field line. And you just wonder if Wade Miley was worried about bouncing this pitch. We've seen him throwing this pitch down near the dirt each and every time he's gone to it. This one had a little bit more elevation to it, and Jake Elmore, what a great job of shortening the swing and just going down and digging that pitch out and keeping it fair. What a what a job. Rays have taken a 2 nothing lead on Elmore's second home run of the year. This one did not get down to the spot that Miley wanted it, and you got to tip your hat or helmet, that is, to Jake Elmore. Stayed right with it and gives the Rays a quick two run lead. That might be the first slider that Miley has not thrown well today. And, and you know, you, you wonder again, is he worried about bouncing that pitch? You know, giving up a run with a wild pitch because you're right, the sliders down and in, going for the punch out, they have gotten to their spot. This one does not. And Elmore, look at him go down and get that. Now, if he would have just done the Carlton Fisk, stay fair, that would have been even, even a topper. So the Rays lead 2-0, two outs, bases empty. Geyer takes the pitch down. Well, two home runs for Rivera, both at the expense of Red Sox pitching. Remember, in his first Rays at bat, he homered off Edward Mujica back on April the 22nd. Gotta love that. Home run was pretty good too. Strike two, one and two. Two balls, two strikes. It's foul outside of third. Away. It's three and two. Into the dirt. There's ball four. Geyer on for the second time. He was hit by a pitch in the third. Draws the walk in the fifth to get Butler to the plate. Number nine, Joey Butler. Butler is struck out and grounded into a double play. Hitting 321 for the year. Takes the pitch inside. Butler. Started the day leading all American League rookies in hitting. One ball, one strike. Also, first among rookies in slugging percentage and second in on base percentage. Miss. One and two. Longoria is on deck. Two and two. Cabrera led off the inning with a triple. And with one out, Jake Elmore lined up. One two slider down the left field line out of here. Reaching and just got a little piece of that. 
staying alive on the off speed. That right there, that kind of swing is a byproduct of the way that Wade Miley has thrown the ball for the majority of the game. He made a couple of mistakes. Cabrera made him pay. Jake Elmore made him pay. Time called. Butler getting out of there and granted time by Adam Hamari. That was late. Very late. Wade Miley already in his delivery, but. You could hear Hamari calling and, and granting time to Butler. And we've seen Joey Butler call time twice here tonight. That's all you need to know about Wade Miley's working tempo. Cut the miss. So Butler missed the off speed again. But the Rays get two. On the home run by Jake Elmore. We've gone through five. It's 2 nothing, Tampa Bay. Very good, giving up just one hit. That game with two outs in the fourth. And Jake Elmore has given him a lead with one swing of the bat in the bottom of the fifth inning. Boy, he took that breaking ball, that slider that stayed over the plate. Wasn't a horrible slider, just wasn't as good as what we've seen from Wade Milan. He swept that right down the left field line. And now Matt Andrees working with a lead. Sandy Leone, the catcher. This pitch is a strike. Leon called out on strikes his first time. Lifts it into left center field. Geyer is there and makes the catch. Boy, when you watch the Rays outfield as Xavier Cedeno is up in the bullpen, the Rays outfield. Has just quietly now when Kiermaier's out there, he he injects a lot of excitement. <laughs> but the rest of the outfield has just quietly become an outstanding defensive unit. Bradley Jr. taking a strike. I mean, they go get balls almost routinely that other outfields wind up chasing to the track or to the wall. Yep, and we get the benefit of having a really nice. View from where we are located in these ballparks and let's start with David DeJesus who's gonna Make that catch right there. You know, he's the grizzled veteran He really started to stand out his work in left field at Fenway Park and the job that he did playing the monster in that series Kevin Kiermeyer covers Ridiculous amount of ground and, and he does it with flash and pizzazz and I mean he's not afraid to leave his feet He plays hard all the time. He backs up plays How many times have we seen him back up a play and either keep a guy from advancing or throw a guy out who was trying to advance and then Sousa jr. 
Same way, long strider, covers a lot of ground. It, they're, they're a lot of fun to watch. And today, Geyer's out there in center field. Put him wherever you want out there, and he's done a nice job in center, tracking down a couple fly balls. 1 0 the count on Betts. One ball, one strike. It's fouled up the right side. One and two. One and two, the count to Betts. Fly ball right field. Susan Jr. camps under it. One, two, three. Got the Red Sox in the six of the Rays leading two nothing. Tomorrow on Rays Live, the pregame show presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Chris Archer's after number 10 tomorrow. We'll hear from him. Evan Longoria fouls the first pitch, strike one. And they'll have uh, Kevin Kiermeyer on doing a bunting demo. And Archer coming in with a record of nine and four. And he's taken this throwback 70s look very seriously. And working on that all season long, and it's finally paid off. It's key on this day. You, you notice that no hat today. He's just going to go. He's letting it out. Maybe the headband after the game. It's a good look. I wish I could do it, or anything <laughs> close to it. Instead, we're going to go with uh, every other day shave. That's great. Goria reaching is out on strikes. So one away here in the bottom of the sixth. Jake McGee is up in the bullpen now. And guess what that means? It's, it's a day for and Reese. That's exactly what it means. Six excellent innings for the Rays starter. Do you, do you think and I understand I mean we we're far enough into the season that we know how the Rays do things 
You know how they, they, they have this this thought these starters are going to go out five six innings and they love their bullpen. They're going to turn it over to the bullpen. We, we've seen the workload that they've undertaken and will continue to undertake. But you, you think you get nervous making that call on a day like today with the way that Andres has thrown the baseball because he has been just outstanding. I mean six shutout innings on, on a, a, a hit a hit. Yeah but there's definitely a commitment. To getting that bullpen in. That, well, that's exactly what it is. But do you, do, do you still think that there are some days it's easy to make that call? Today cannot be one of them. <laughs> not with a line like that. Well, he's not going to get much better. He may not pitch. Uh, a guy could go his entire career, have a good career, and not have another stretch like he just had. Oh, yeah. I mean, th 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 just a, a dominant outing by Matt Andrees. And he's thrown the ball well since he's come back, you know, and he's he's had three starts now and one uh, relief appearance, extended relief appearance. But he has been uh, he's been outstanding, pitching with more confidence, better tempo, and, and today he had everything working. Outstanding job. Full count. Three two liner that's going to be fair up the left field side Forsyth on his way to second and he's in there with a double Forsyth with his 15th double of the year. Boy, look at Logan Forsyth just stay on that change up as long as he could. And able to flip it down into the corner. He is swinging the bat so well. Steven Souza Jr. takes the pitch too low for a ball. Well, the Rays with another scoring opportunity in the bottom of the sixth. Two and oh. Matt Barnes is throwing down the left field side in the bullpen for the Red Sox now. Ground ball by the mound. It'll be grabbed by Bogarts. Throw to first. Souza is out there, and Forsyth goes to third, where he will be with two outs. Well, if Wade Miley was able to come up with that ground ball from Sousa Jr. and he's going to take a check look at Logan Forsythe, he had a chance to get him right here. There's Logan. Boy, he feels that, and they're going to get Logan in a rundown at minimum. He gets underneath him. You take the out at first, but you have that runner at third again. Start to think about a ball in the dirt. Big two out hit. Got some options here to get another run home. And as Drubal Cabrera's at the plate, coming off three hits last night and two today. Foul ball. Cabrera at the moment is five out of his last six. Miley about to make his 100th pitch of the game. It's too high. The throw to first. Rays leave a man under the seventh. Two nothing Tampa Bay.
And the job that Matt Andrees did. He went out, he set the tempo, much like Wade Miley did on Boston's side, but Matt Andrees was just a little better through his six innings, moving the ball around the zone. He had good late movement on his two-seamer. We noticed that early. Went up in the zone every now and then, and he just continued to baffle Boston hitters, getting him leaning him out over the plate, coming in, making him aware of the pitch in, then going back out away. A great job of the mix and match with everything, and he was absolutely superb. And he's telling Chris Archer, listen, let me tell you how to do this with this Boston team. Gave up just the one hit. Bogarts with the two out single in the fourth. And so Jake McGee takes over, making his 17th appearance. He'll face Brock Holt. Short is on the bat. That pitch comes sailing in on him. Two ninety three on the year for Brock after the 0 for 2 so far today. It's foul out of play. One and one off the facing of the upper deck. Brock Holt filling in at second for Dustin Pedroia on the disabled list with the hamstring injury. Holt can fill in any anywhere on the diamond. Well, this is what the Rays had in mind. When you think about their, the the last three pitchers of the bullpen, what it's typically been. You think about Jepson, Boxberger, McGee, and in no particular order. We've seen McGee save some games. We've seen him in the eighth inning. Here tonight, we see him in the seventh inning because you got lefty, righty, lefty as far as hitters go, based on matchups, and that's the way that Kevin Cash wants to work that bullpen. Well, that pitch to Holt up and he fouled it back. And the last pitch registered at 92. Yeah, the velocity not there right now for Jake McGee. Well, that one at 95, that's a little more like his neighborhood. Well, it's two strikes. <laughs> two strikes, you start to bring out the reserves. Jake pitched the eighth inning last night. And we got Bogart, Ortiz, and Sandoval. And that's going to be low. Full count to hold. Big pitch right here, 3 2 to Holt leading off the seventh. Ground ball by the mound. Foresight gloves and throws. One away here in the seventh inning, and time to check in with Todd Callis. Todd? Hey, Dwayne, some good news today for Jake Odorizzi, a live bullpen session. The guy, in addition to Chris Archer, who has been allowed to go deep into games this year for the Rays. Really look good. He was having a good time out there, laughing a lot. He actually sheared the bat in half for Steven Souza Jr. on a split change. Next up for Oda Rizzi, a rehab start Thursday for the Charlotte Stone Crabs. He would love one rehab start. The Rays may be thinking about two, but either way, we should see Oda Rizzi before the All Star break if all goes well. Guys, back to you. See Oda Rizzi, and we could see Matt Moore. And the All Star break. And Todd brings up a good point you know, when he talks about really the, the, Jake Odorizzi, one of the two race starters allowed to pitch deeper into a game. Also, one of two race starters, along with Chris Oucher, that are allowed to stay up past midnight. It's a win win. Well, if you're going to stay up that late, you need company. Matt Andres, 10 o'clock tonight, <laughs> especially with the day game. Jake McGee and the rest of the bullpen come put you to bed. Tuck you in. It's team effort. Two balls and a strike to count to Bogarts. Holt has grounded out. 
Two balls and a strike to count to Bogarts with Ortiz waiting on deck. Two and two. Technically, the first out on Holt scored one four three. With McGee getting a little bit of that one on its way to Forsyth. And we'll see another two two pitch in the offing here. Well, the Rays playing the fifth game of this ten game homestand. Holding a two run lead in the seventh. And in the battle as Bogarts fouls this one back. Fastball up at 96. As the at bats have gone on, as the inning has moved on, Jake McGee has ramped up the miles per hour on that heater. And you can see him right now giving Xander Bogarts all he's got. Two two. And an end with a curveball. And we're all the way out at three balls, two strikes. Don't see it very often, but boy, if he keeps this in the strike zone, Xander Bogart's all locked up. Three two, and it's lifted toward the right field line. Susan Jr. That's a fair ball, and he makes the catch for the second out. Right down the line toward the corner. Two outs, base is empty. David Ortiz will be the hitter as Longoria talks it over. With Jake McGee. They're talking about their defensive setup where Evan was going to be. I'm going to play shallow on that left side. Maybe think about taking that bunt away from Ortiz for a pitch or two. Ortiz, two for six lifetime against the Rays' hard throwing lefty. And that's strike one on a fastball at 95. And now Evan Longoria backs up. He's playing in between short and third, and he's moved as Drupal Cabrera over to the other side of second base. O two. May not need the defense on this at bat. That one and fouls it. Houston with a couple runs on the Yankees. It's six to two, New York. And in the bottom of the fourth inning of that game. We mentioned earlier that uh, Brett Oberholzer had been ejected from that game. A little more on that. He was ejected after it was deemed that he was throwing at the Alex Rodriguez following the Chris Young home run. Assuming no time was not granted. Ortiz stepped out and the pitch was delivered and went for a ball. Amari had not granted time, so the count's going to be one and two. Watch David Ortiz here. He's going to step out. Amari, he's getting down in the ready position and then calls it one and two. Two and 
two. Fastball at 97. Trying to close him out with that one. Again, but that fastball at 96, well off the plate. Yeah, Jake McGee will miss. He usually does not miss by much, and that pitch just well, big spot here. He just yanked that pitch. Still can end it right here. Today's game and all season tires plus donates a hundred dollars to the pediatric cancer foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. One of those today by Jake Elmore. David De Jesus leads off and the pitch is a strike. Wade Miley still out there on the mound. He had 101 pitches through six. One and one. Side beyond the bullpen out of play. So the right hander Kevin Jepson up in the bullpen now. Two two. Retired here. Miley on to get the Jesus to open the inning. And Matt Barnes ready in the bullpen, and John Farrell will go to the mound and make the pitching change. We'll be back right after this.
percent or more on car insurance. By Circle K, it's the summer of '69 at Circle K. Just 69 cents for your favorite size polar pop all summer long. And by Grow Financial, don't go through life, grow through life. At the drop today, the Rays batting in the bottom of the seventh inning, leading two to nothing. They'll be facing Matt Barnes now. With Jake Elmore about to step in. Barnes just back from the minor leagues. He's had two prior stints with Boston this year. Elmore fouls the first pitch. Fastball in the mid 90s. James home run. The difference in this game right now that came in the fifth. Ran with two strikes. Wade Miley trying to close him out with the slider down and in. Doesn't get it there. And Jake Elmore goes over the low wall out in left field right down the line. Number two. Well, we've seen two of the three offerings from Barnes. Fastball, curveball, changeup. That fastball we saw it at 95. The changeup, or the excuse me, the curveball, 83. Good downward tilt. And he comes back with it to strike him out. Two gone. His breakout's been interesting in the stints he's had this year with Boston. When you separate what he's done at Fenway and what he's done on the road. He's had 15 appearances in the big leagues this year coming into this one nine on the road with an earned run average of 138 and in six games at Boston at Fenway his ERA is 13 and a half. Rene Rivera. Seats and left for Rivera. Three nothing Tampa Bay. Well, Rene Rivera, all he's trying to do is help Barnes even out those ERAs. Four seam heater, very little movement, and Rene Rivera unloads almost to the top. Fourth home run of the year for Rene Rivera. Hundred point nine off the bat for that long home run. Want to know the count on Geyer. Into the screen. Two and one. Jepson has been joined by Xavier Sedano in the bullpen. Hot shot. Oh, just foul. Geyer making a bid for an extra base hit. Well, how many times have we seen Brandon Geyer going extreme left side right up the left field line? You know, he gets out and around the baseball about as well as any right handed hitter you're going to see. Not that you always want that approach, but that's the way that he hits and he uses and wears out that left field line as well as anybody. Foul ball to stay alive. Tries to flatten that swing, keep it in the zone as long as possible. And so many times he's he's pulling that ball over to the left side. See a lot of ground balls between short and third. A 
has worked a full count. Second time he's gone 3 2 in, in at bat today. He walked in the fifth inning after being hit by a pitch down 0 2 in the third. And he walks. Nice at bat for Geyer. He heads to first, and Joey Butler is on his way to the plate. Butler looking for his first hit. 0 for 3 in this game. Slow Barnes was to the plate. Sandy Leone had no chance. That stolen base by Brandon Geyer was off of the pitcher. Very slow and deliberate with the leg kick. And Brandon Geyer, you see it right here. Good lead. And then watch this. Boy, a lot of time taken before delivery and no chance. I mean, none. Geyer's eighth stolen base and 10 attempts this year. Turn, nothing doing with Bogarts breaking in behind the runner. You already had your chance. Twice. He's trying to add another run to this three run lead. It's one and one. Two strikes. Geyer hits to third, and he is safe. So Geyer steals second and now third base. And, and really, you, you start to wonder, I mean, with Barnes on the mound, it, it's going to be a track meet. Brandon Geyer, look at, he didn't, you know, a lot of times guys steal third base, they get a walking lead, and the pitcher just doesn't stop them. Brandon Geyer, almost from a set position, and still with ease. And Butler is out on strikes. Breaking ball. So the Rays get a run on the home run by Rene Rivera. On to the eighth. It's three to nothing. Tampa Bay.
the lead off. You know, Brandon Geyer walks still second and then third. What Sandoval here? Trying to force him off the bag. He did force him off the bag. Little uh, gamesmanship there. And Brandon Geyer probably not a real big fan of that. <laughs> Geyer says, get over there. And Brian Gorman says, he's safe. They, they did have a little uh, conversation going on after that, I think, to clear the air. But, um, yeah. A little low post uh, <laughs> boxing out. Well, Kevin Jepson, the new pitcher for the Rays, his first pitch to Pablo Sandoval is wide. One ball, no strikes. Jepson making his 36th appearance. One and one. Well, you expect the heat and about front reaching on the change. A change that was nowhere near the plate, and that's when that ball, when you're releasing it, you're Kevin Jepson, you're like, mm, man, you had a good idea, but you know it's going to be a ball a foot off the plate, and then a hitter does you a favor and gives you a one-two count. What a what a lift. It's funny how when you're out there on the mound, how you can foretell things when the ball leaves your hand, and when that ball left his hand, I guarantee you, Kevin Jepson is thinking two and one. Doggone it just like you will let a pitch come off your fingertips and as soon as it leaves your hand You know it's going to get smoked <laughs> whether you're asking for another baseball or backing up a bag remains to be seen But you know a bad pitch when you see one or when you feel one I should say yeah That's part of what we were talking about. I think the other night when you when you feel it. Oh, yeah I mean, you can, all I mean, you can you, feel the you, bad you, too. Yeah <laughs> Well, it's a 2 2 count on Sandoval. He got him. Well, strikes him out with a fastball. One gone in the eighth. Coming up on Rays Live, the post game presented by Checkers. Todd and Arrestus anchored the coverage. We'll have the Kevin Cash press conference per normal. And Emily Austin will have interviews from the clubhouse. Here's Mike Napoli. Lifting a high fly ball. It's Geyer making the catch. Two outs. Number 31, Bases will be empty with Alejandro Diaz. About to step in. Diaz has spent a short time with the Orioles. Picked up by the Red Sox. Hits it a long way to right. And that one is gone. First pitch fastball, and Diazza hits his second home run in a Boston uniform. Now it's three to one. Well, how big was that home run by Rene Rivera? So you, you've just traded home runs late here. You need four outs. This ball stays middle of the plate, thigh high, and Deaza. No stride, and he knew it. Gave it a ride. Sandy Leon, the catcher. Popping it up out of play. Three to one ball game.
One and one. Popped up. That's going to carry into the seats and the count. He's a ball and two strikes. Off speed. Got that pop foul. Third, Jepson has given up this year. Oh, and strike three call with the curveball. Nice job there to close out the top of the eighth. Three one raise. By your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Rays hold a three to one lead moving into the bottom of the eighth inning. Today's great moment in Rays history presented by Geico. June 27th, 1998. Devil Rays rally to get five runs off Philly starter Kurt Schilling en route to a 5 1 victory as Paul Kinnert, uh, Paul Sorrento connects on a pinch hit grand slam in the eighth, chasing Kurt Schilling. Sorrento's home run, a grand slam, and the Devil Rays came away with a 5 to 1 victory. Evan Longoria is going to lead off here in the bottom of the eighth. Longoria, Forsyth, and Souza. Houston has tied the Yankees. They're in the bottom of the fifth, 6 6. Goria takes a breaking ball, and that's a strike. Middle of the order. Goria shoots one deep to center. Well tagged and out of here. Long home run for Long. Fastball in. Not a lot of movement. Evan Longoria is showing you the quick hands. We talked earlier in the game, content to go away if they stay away. You come in and he gets the head out and goes into left center field. Almost more center field out there near that Captain Morgan's deck. Start to party. Home run <laughs> on the deck. Nice answer, too. And it's 4 to 1, Tampa Bay. 101.2 off the bat for Longoria. As he sent that one out to center. One strike to count to Logan Forsythe. One and one. So 
And a Matt Barnes just back from the minor leagues, and the Rays have greeted him with two home runs. One and two. Bobby Ross in the bullpen for Boston. Home run for Evan. It's his eighth of the year. Forsyth missed the fastball at 96. Let's check in with Todd one more time. Todd? Hey, Dwayne, coming up after our Rays Live post game show, it will be the Inside the Rays premiere featuring Rays third base coach Charlie Montoyo. 18 years in the minor leagues as a coach and manager at every different level, now makes it to the major leagues. He'll also tell you the story about how his young son, Alex, has been dealing with. With Epstein's anomaly his whole career his whole life and how that has affected his career and how he has looked at life differently and young Alex is just a joy to see around the Rays clubhouse and a baseball guy just like his dad Charlie that'll be tonight right after Rays live inside the Rays Charlie Montoyo guys. All right stay tuned for that. Rays leading here four to one in the eighth. Susan Junior taking a fastball down it's one and one. Two strikes. Hard stuff again. It takes care of Sousa. Back to back strikeouts now. Our T Mobile game changer today. The Rays starting pitcher, 25 year old right hander Matt Andrees. Six superb innings for Andrees, only 70 pitches. This is all that was asked uh, of Matt Andrees. You know, the way that he was throwing, you'd like to see him go a little bit further, but this is the way that the Rays are going to do things, and, and you couldn't have done it much better than Matt Andrees. And he was, he was sharp from the get go. Hitter number one. Great, great night. Well, Jubal Cabrera hits it on the ground. It's Bogarts on the right side out of the ship taking care of that ground ball. Rays get a run on the home run by Longoria. On to the ninth. It's 4 to 1, Tampa Bay.
Today's game summary brought to you by Gold and Diamond Source. Rays had a great pitching performance from Matt Andrees. Six innings. They scored two runs in the bottom of the fifth on the home run by Jake Elmore. And another run in the seventh. Boston a run in the eighth and a Rays a run in the eighth inning as well. Home runs today by Elmore, Rene Rivera, and Evan Longoria for the Rays. And we go to the ninth with Brad Boxberger taking over. He'll face Jackie Bradley Jr. who opened the ninth. First pitch is a strike. So while the Rays carry a four to one lead into the ninth inning, the Astros, after trailing the Yankees six to nothing and having their starting pitcher ejected, have come back to tie that game in Houston. It's six six now. Strike two to Bradley. Rays open the day, leading New York by a half game in the AL East. Ooh, pretty close. One and two. Made made closer by the uh, effort of Rene Rivera. Uh, that ball w was clearly off the plate, but the way that he receives it, he makes it look like it's a borderline pitch. And you know, sometimes you get that call. In on him, and it's popped up. Short left, and DeJesus handles that one. Little popper into left on a fastball in. One gone. Mookie Betts, 0 for 3, came in with a 13 game hitting streak. Boxberger's pitch is a strike. Boxberger pitched an inning in last night's game, gave up one hit, logged two strikeouts. Cut the miss. Bottom fell out of that pitch. Uh, it's, it's the fastball changeup combo that gets most of the job done for Brad Boxbury. We've seen him introduce a curveball this year. Out of play. But the bottom line is that the money combination is, is the fastball to change up. Same mechanics, same delivery, same arm angle, same arm speed, and a difference of about 12, 14 miles an hour. Very difficult for a hitter to contend with. Another one up the right side out of play. A two strike count to Betts. Last two at 94. So Bent's battling. Chris Archer will be going tomorrow, looking for his tenth. Be with you at 12:30. Justin Masterson pitches for Boston, and a battle going on here between Boxberger and Betts. And this may be the time to break out the breaking ball. 0-2. Betts has fouled off the good fastballs. He's fouled off the changeup. Try to bury a hook right here. See if he'll chase that. Fly ball back into center field. Another fastball at 94. Geyer has got plenty of room. Two outs in the ninth. And the Rays are one out away from closing this one out. Well, the way this one started with Andres and Miley, you wondered for a few innings if anybody would score. The Rays got on the board on the two run home run by Jake Elmore. Now Holt down the left side. That's a foul ball. 
Brock Holt 0 for 3. And you wish you could go back and climb inside the head of Wade Miley on the two strike slider to Jake Elmore. With the runner on third, you know, he had been burying that pitch, you know, right on top of the dirt, in the dirt. And you just wonder if there was any thought of throwing that pitch and not bouncing it because of the runner on third. Because it stayed up just enough that Elmore was able to get out around it yep. and, and take it right down the left field line. Maybe there's nothing to that at all, and it's just a pitch that he missed. It's but a legitimate question with the runner on third. Because his slider had such great depth all day, yep. except for that one. That's right. Two strikes to count to Brock Holt. One ball, two strikes. Single for Brock Holt keeps the game going. Well, he's going to battle you. He, he, he's a tough, tough out. A guy that's not going to quit. A guy that certainly doesn't want to make the last out of a ball game. And he's able to do just enough here on this pitch down in the zone. Make contact, give yourself a chance, and it pays off. Xander Bogarts will bat now. In this three run game, the Rays have hit three home runs today, as we mentioned, which ties their season's high. It's the sixth time they've done that. They did it against the Indians on the 19th in Cleveland. There it goes. The pitch is a strike. Holt moves in to second base on indifference. Boxberger 14 of his 17 pitches for strikes. And there's another one. 0-2. And you want this ball game to end right here with Bogarts. No reason to want to see David Ortiz up there, regardless of what's been going on with him this season. Stay, keep him in the on-deck circle. Face him tomorrow. That's right. In the top of the second. Swing and a miss. It's all over. Rays win it four to one. Rays pull even in this current series with this victory. And a nice win for the Rays. Getting great pitching for Matt Andrees in the bullpen. They're now up by a full game on New York pending the outcome of the Yankees Astros game and as we mentioned the Astros have come back to tie that game. So the Rays will either be a game and a half up or a half game up depending upon the outcome of that one. Rays earned their 42nd victory of the year 4 7 and 0 with five left for the Rays 1 3 and 0 with two men left on base for the Red Sox. Andres wins his third against two losses. Save number 20 for Boxberger. Miley, the loser, one and one. All in two hours and 21 minutes. So I'll turn back the clock to the 70s. That 221 <laughs> is exactly on the mark. Rays hit three home runs before 23,876. Todd Callis standing by on the field right now with Jake Elmore. Todd? Yeah, we got Jake Elmore right here. Jake, uh, first of all, nice win for the team, especially having lost four of five, some close ones to bounce back and get one today. I guess Matt Andrees set the tone for you, huh? Absolutely. Matt was great. Uh, you know, we really battled off Miley. 
I think he had his A stuff today, and uh, you know we really came out and it was tough to get hits off of him, and um, you know luckily we, we battled and, and came out with a victory. Former teammate, right? You, you guys played together. Did yeah, Arizona? I feel like I'm about to get. So I'm about to go out. You guys are sensing that pretty well. Did the crowd give it away? No, no, no. I actually, out of the corner of my eye, I saw him. I was expecting it. So, and then you just have to wear it. So, it's fun. You, you guys play together in Arizona, right? Uh, we did. We were in Arizona. We actually came up uh, low A together and double A. And so, yeah, we've been together a while. So, uh, it was uh, it was fun to get, get one off him. So, he gets the comebacker off you the first time. And then you have runner on third, one out. You're down in the count. What's your thought process there? Uh, well, you know, you're just trying to see a ball up. You're, you're trying to at least get it to the outfield get the run in uh, and he had been burying that slider low in all day and luckily he left one up was that a tough pitch to keep fair where it was uh, yeah it was it was, it was in uh, so um, it, it was it was just kind of tough you knew you had it though yeah well as long as it stayed fair I, I, I thought it I thought it was gone but I uh, I didn't know if it was gonna stay fair or not so glad it did and then uh, the uniforms. It's turn back the clock day. You know, what, what's your assessment of the style here today? That you I, I feel like these could be an alternate road uni. I, I'm, yeah, I, they're kind of they're different, but but cool. We got some compliments on them from the Red Sox players. I don't know if they're being facetious or not, but uh, I, I like them. Today was uh, not only turn back the clock day, but the game was played in two hours and 21 minutes, and it seemed like it was old school Rays or new school Rays, whatever, starting pitcher and then bullpen dominant. Yeah, I mean that's that's the Rays' mo, I believe. I mean our, our bullpen. It's been fantastic all year, so fun to watch, and, and obviously our uh, our starters have been great as well, and injuries was no exception today. Nice job today, Jake. Thanks. Thanks. All right, guys, back to you. All right, Todd, thank you. This win here ensures that the Rays will remain in first place all alone for the lucky 13th straight day. When the sun comes up tomorrow, they'll be alone in first place again. Rays are winners 4-1, to one. and Dries picks up the victory, and Boxberger closes it out. Same two teams tomorrow. Chris Archer will be after win number 10, and we'll be with you at 12:30 with our coverage right here on Sun Sports. LeBron Anderson and the rest of our crew, Dwayne Stats. Hope you've enjoyed the telecast. Rays are winners, and Rays Live, the postgame, comes your way next. All part of our continuing coverage.